More trade deadline thoughts and ideas, which include one former Cardinal whose popularity is starting to pick up big time. This is Locked on Cardinals. You are Locked on Cardinals, your daily St. Louis Cardinals podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey there, Cardinals fans. I'm J.D. Hafford, and I'm a national radio sports anchor, born and raised in the Lou and a lifetime Cardinals fan. And I'm your host for Locked On Cardinals, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, covering your team every day. You can follow me on Twitter, X at J.D. Sports Radio. You can follow the podcast at LO underscore Cardinals. I do want to thank those of you who make Locked On Cardinals your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. We're also on YouTube. Stop on by, like, subscribe, comment, hit the notification button so you know. When new episodes are posted, this is a show serving Cardinal Nation and giving the best fans in baseball all of the info about the birds on the bat. This episode of Locked on Cardinals is brought to you by Booking.com. Booking. Yeah, the right stay can make you a fan of any city, even your rivals. Check out Booking.com for your stay today. So the MLB trade deadline is now at the time of this recording, and I know it's a late one. I apologize, but, uh, you know, other jobs take precedent. At times, uh, but the MLB trade deadline is now five days away, according to my clock. And so far, not much has been done <laughs> by anyone with teams still unsure of whether or not they should acquire pieces or trade away assets before the July 30th deadline hits. Uh, I did see that AJ Puck went from the Marlins to the Diamondbacks uh, late on uh, Thursday night here. Um, one name, though, that is becoming more and more prevalent among trade rumors is former Cardinal Jack Flaherty, who's now with the Detroit Tigers. You know that by now. Uh, the turnaround for Jack this season has been amazing. It really has. And I, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that I had that much faith in Flaherty going into this season. I knew he would, he would be motivated. Of course he would be. He wanted to prove the Cardinals and the rest of the league wrong about his value in the league. Uh, a motivated player in any sport. Someone with a, a chip right there on the shoulder with something to prove usually goes out and does well. I mean, how many times do we make the jokes about revenge game? We're playing so-and-so. It's a revenge game. Look out. And players end up doing well against their former teams. It happens a lot. And that's something that has worked well for Jack this year because not only did he want to prove the Cardinals wrong, which when they faced him, what happened? He shoves, right? Uh, I'm sure he wanted to prove the Orioles wrong. I don't think he was angry with either one of these franchises, but obviously when they don't resign you or they trade you away, you kind of want to prove them like, hey, you screwed up. You screwed up. You should have let me go. But he wanted to prove the whole league wrong on top of those two teams because after you know seemingly not getting many good offers this offseason as a free agent, he ends up with the Tigers. And I, I don't know what offers he got. I never saw that, uh, what teams reached out, what their their – there are offers war. I'm sure he got other ones, but you don't normally take a one-year deal to play for a team that lost 84 games last season if any better opportunities were available. Maybe some better teams did reach out and had offers, but they just weren't the $14 million that the Tigers gave them. I honestly don't know. We, ne we never heard, really. We just heard that he had signed a one-year deal with Detroit. But whatever the reason that he had for accepting that deal, it, it has worked out beautifully for Jack Flaherty. He bet on himself, and it looks like he's probably going to cash in. He's now one of the most in-demand trade assets at this year's trade deadline. Uh, Ken Rosenthal and Katie Wu did a piece at The Athletic today, actually, talking about Jack Flaherty and where he could end up after the deadline goes down. I'll put the link in the description. Uh, one of those teams that they have him going to and being very interested in him is one of his former teams, not the Cardinals, but the Baltimore Orioles. They point out that last year they weren't surprised at his struggles after coming over in the trade with the Cardinals due to the amount of innings they had thrown already that season and that it was you know the first full season back from all of those injuries that had plagued them for a couple of years. Jack is going to be a rental again. He'll be a free agent when the season is over. But this time around, he's got a much better resume to show teams who are interested in trading for him and signing him. Last year with the Cardinals, 
seven and six, 4.43 ERA, ERA plus of 99 before he got moved to Baltimore. So a very kind of middle of the road average type of pitcher. With Baltimore, he was even worse. One and three, 6.75 ERA, ERA plus of 61. But then this year in Detroit, reborn. Seven and five, but we know how records are, whatever. You don't really pay attention to those quite as much anymore. But the ERA, 2.95. ERA plus of 142. His strikeouts per nine are at a career high of 11.2. Opponents are hitting just 211 against him. And I've said previously that I didn't think the Cardinals would try to rekindle their relationship with Flaherty simply because we've been there, we've done that. And it felt like it was just that point in the relationship that both parties needed to just kind of move on and do their own thing. And it's worked well for both. I mean, Flaherty has found all this success in Detroit, which is great. Nobody, Nobody's wishing ill will against Jack Flaherty. So he finds that in Detroit, the Cardinals move on. And instead of trying to sign Jack Flaherty, they bring in Sonny Gray, Kyle Gibson, and Lance Lynn. The Sonny Gray and Kyle Gibson signings have been really good, right? Lance Lynn hasn't been as bad as I thought he was going to be. And some people speculated that Flaherty might not welcome a, a return to St. Louis. Because this is something that, you know, with, with there not being that many options, I mean, just because Jack Flaherty used to be here doesn't mean you should just cross him off the list. I think it was a mistake on my part to think that way. And I'm starting to open up to the idea that I mean, you got to look at everybody. You can't hold grudges. You can't think about what happened in the past. You got to gotta see what that guy is right there in front of you now. And right now, he's a pretty darn good pitcher. Uh, but like I said, some people were speculating that maybe Jack wouldn't want to come to St. Louis, even if the team did have interest in him. And apparently, that's not true, at least according to the social media activity that we've seen from Jack Flaherty. Uh, BK from 101 ESPN had a poll up about trading – Prospect Thomas J.C. for Flaherty. Uh, it was a couple of days ago that he put it up there. And in the responses to the poll, which favored bringing him back, by the way, which was kind of nice to see from the Cardinal fans, 35.9% of the votes said, yeah, bring him back. Um, one person wrote that Jack wouldn't want to come back, that he, he was done with St. Louis. And in response to that person's comment, someone else said, Jack never said that he didn't want to be here and that the narrative that he wanted to leave and had a bad attitude was false. And guess who clicked the like button on that particular statement? You guessed it, Jack Flaherty. Now, Josh Jacobs at RedbirdRants.com, friend of the show, even proposed some deals in case the Cardinals did decide to kick the tires on bringing Jack Flaherty back. And as much as like a week or two I was a, ago I was opposed to it, Maybe it's something that they should really look into, considering who the pitcher is that Jack Flaherty is right now. Like, don't think about injured 2021 or 2022. Don't think about that. Think about who he is right now. Look what he's done this year. Of course, the Cardinals should bring somebody like that in, right? And he's familiar with things around. St. Louis. So is it really that such a bad idea? Is it really that outlandish to think about it? I don't think so. So we're going to take a look at these deals that Josh has proposed and um, we'll do that next. We got three of them for you. So we'll knock them out next for you on uh, Locked on Cardinals. Order supplies from the website that's made for the skilled trades. Find thousands of parts from hundreds of brands in just a couple of clicks at SupplyHouse.com. Now, SupplyHouse.com gives you 24-7 access to a huge selection of plumbing, HVAC, and electrical supplies with fast delivery anywhere in the United States. And if you need help with an order, the good thing is they got humans that will talk to you. Get industry-leading after-sales service from their friendly and knowledgeable customer support team and talk to a real person every time. Something that I, I miss dearly when I have issues with things of my own. And when I can't talk to a human, very frustrating. And there's great news for plumbers, technicians, and contractors because being a pro has its perks. Trade industry professionals can join their free Trade Master program for free shipping and serious discounts on every order. Over 100,000 pros already trust the Trade Master program to deliver results. And you can apply for your membership today and get a competitive edge 
on every order at supplyhouse.com slash TM. Save money and time when you order online. Order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical supplies from supplyhouse.com. Real people, real service. Game time is an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, and I'm really glad they are because going to baseball games, it is a tradition. If you grew up in the Midwest, specifically in Missouri and in the St. Louis area, it is tradition to go to a ball game, at least one during the season. And it's a whole lot of fun. You've got Ballpark Village, which is a beautiful setup. And then, of course, Bush Stadium is gorgeous as well. And game time can get you in the door when you need tickets it makes tickets available to you and getting them makes it easier it makes it faster prices on the game time app they actually go down the closer you get to first pitch they got killer last minute deals you're going to get the all-in prices which is great so there's no little secret charges that pop up on you you get views from your seat and you get their lowest price guarantee game time takes the guesswork out of buying mlb tickets and they've got game time ticket coverage when your purchase is covered with the most flexible customer service policy in the ticketing industry. So download the game time app, create an account, and use the code locked on MLB for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem the code locked on MLB, which is spelled L O C K E D O N M L B for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day and have to turn down the volume because of the shouting? Then make the switch to Locked On Sports today. It's a free 24-7 sports streaming channel. It's programmed for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all of the screaming. And you can find it on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Uh, the Nationals are going to be at Bush Stadium this weekend, and you can catch every pitch of the Cardinals Hometown Broadcast with Sirius XM, just download the SXM app and search the word Cardinals. So what would it take to get Jack Flaherty from Detroit? Something that I don't think a lot of us thought we'd ever say. How do we get Jack back? Um, you saw the overall numbers this season. I've already broke those down for you. Uh, other things that are great, expiring contract. He's still relatively young. Is almost certain to test the free agent market again and probably cash in on a multi-year deal this time around. Uh, he's a rental. And some of that makes him a little more expensive. And then there's other pieces of that that make him less expensive. So uh, the fact that there isn't any remaining control years after this makes him cheaper. His numbers and his age make him a little more expensive. So, um, but he's a rental. So he's going to be traded and uh, probably, I would say it's probably going to be cheaper than you really think. I don't think it's going to be super cheap. Like you're not just going to be able to grab him for nothing couple of a ball pitchers or something so you're gonna have to give something up now to be fair flaherty has been really 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 good over the last couple of months so since may 30th when he pitched uh he was at boston then since then jack flaherty um has made eight starts had a little back issue in there but from all accounts seems to be fine but eight starts six and one era of 1.77 since may 30th opponents are hitting 161 against them he struck out 52 hitters over 45 and two-thirds innings. At one point, he had thrown 16 and two-thirds consecutive shutout innings against Boston, Texas, and Houston. Some pretty good lineups. Had a tough outing against the Angels, which uh, bumped his stats up a, a little bit, like in, in a bad way. But also held the first-place Guardians to just two runs over 12 innings. He, he's been ridiculously good. It's, it's the closest he's been to the Jack Flaherty that we saw when he first came up when people were like, this is your future number one ace for years and years and years to come. So Josh Jacobs, again, at redbirdrants.com, uh, decided to uh, put some proposals for the reinvigorated Jack Flaherty. And you can tell me which one you would pull the trigger on in the comments section down below or Twitter X. So uh, first one he gets into here, number one, Cardinals get Jack Flaherty. The Tigers in return would get left-handed pitcher Cooper Jerpy, which is your Seventh-ranked prospect in the Cardinals system. Catcher Leonardo Bernal, eighth-ranked prospect. And infielder Cesar Prieto, your 18th-ranked prospect. So what do we think about that? Now, Josh points out that, yeah, this deal and any of them that he brings up, they're going to hurt a little bit. 
You're going to have to give up some things that you don't want to so you can get things that you need. Uh, and he also points out something that I've been saying all along is that the Cardinals are going to have to try to outbid the competition because there's so many teams who are going to be in on this. Um, Ken Rosenthal just put out something tonight saying the Texas Rangers, they are not selling. They are in. They are going to try to win. They're going to try to make the playoffs. So you can cross Nathan Evaldi off the list. You can cross Max Scherzer off the list. David Robertson, any of the, any uh, Kirby Yates, all of them. They're not going anywhere. The Rangers are going to try to acquire people. They're not selling. So that's a big deal. That that brings the pool of people who were available. They, it shrinks it, makes it even smaller. Um, as far as this trade goes, I'd certainly hate to lose Cooper Derpy. I, I, he's awkward and left-handed. Reminds me a lot of Chris Sale. And you see what Chris Sale has done in his career when he's healthy, having a hell of a season for the Atlanta Braves right now. Uh, but the other two, I believe the Cardinals have the depth at, at those positions to kind of take the sting off of losing Jerpy a little bit. Um, they've got catchers. Prieto, he's a good prospect, but he's not great by any means, according to the people who scout these guys. Uh, having a good year at AAA, but um, you can survive that and not feel like you just got crushed. Uh, the second deal, Cardinals get Flaherty and outfielder Mark Canna. Tigers get infielder Thomas Ajaci, which is your number four prospect for the Cardinals. They also get right-handed pitcher Takoa Roby, your number five prospect, and left-handed pitcher Zach Thompson. Now, the idea of killing two birds with one stone is something that I'm very much interested in for the Cardinals. Very intriguing because we pointed out they have three real needs. Somebody who can hit left-handed pitching, starter, relievers, right? And if you can get two of those in one deal, Awesome. If you can pull off the trifecta, God bless you, John Mosella. Go for it. But Canna is a right-handed hitter who hits left-handed pitching quite well. He's hitting 294 with an OPS of 880 against lefties this year. That's something the Cardinals could use. Uh, the guy that stings the most for me that you're sitting back uh, to the, the Tigers in this one would be Takoa Roby. I think Sajacy is great, and I love Sajacy. Doesn't wear batting gloves. <laughs> Was your double A MVP last year, but you've got Gorman, Wynn, Edmund, Donovan, so J.C. Prieto, Fermin, and now first-rounder J.J. Weatherholt, who can play the infield. Got a lot of guys there. Using someone from that depth to go get things you need makes sense. Pitching depth in the organization on the other side is not quite so deep. And... Giving up to Koa Roby, it might sting a little bit. Now, he hasn't had a great year. He's dealing with injuries again. So is it something that you're like, is he untouchable? No, of course not. But, you know, giving up one of your top five prospects and one of them being a pitcher, it's not the easiest thing to let go, right? Uh, and then as far as um, adding Thompson, Zach Thompson in there, former first-rounder, who's had success at the major league level in the bullpen and as a starting pitcher, but is currently banished in Memphis. He's actually on the IL right now with back spasms. I don't know what the Cardinals want to do with them. Like it's, it's been, a, and I've used this phrase over and over when describing what they've done with Zach Thompson. It's this, this yo-yo effect where he's in the bullpen and then he's a starter and then he's up with the big club and then he's down with Memphis. Like they have no idea what they want to do with this guy. No clue whatsoever. So using him to go get something that you know you, what you want to do with a certain player makes sense. Because I feel bad for Zach Thompson, man, because there's times where I'm like, he looks brilliant. Quit messing with him. And then they do something else. So I don't know. Very frustrating. It's got to be super frustrating for Zach Thompson. Uh, I'm going to give you Josh's third and final trade proposal next. So uh, we'll hit that up on Locked on Cardinals. So don't move. This episode of Locked on Cardinals is brought to you by Booking.com. Booking. Yeah, with summer travel heating up, especially travel for baseball games. It's time to explore those U.S. cities you always secretly wanted to learn more about. And yeah, we're talking about your rivals. We're talking about the guys in the division. Heck, we're talking about anybody <laughs> in Major League Baseball right now. All of them are rivals for the Cardinals as they try to push for a wild card spot here in 2024. But, you know, Cincinnati, Pittsburgh, Chicago, Milwaukee, obviously your biggest rivals. So booking.com 
we're going to help you out when you're trying to get to those cities and find the perfect spot for you. They got hotels. They got bed and breakfast, vacation rentals, resorts, all of it can be used at booking.com. And you might just find the perfect stay, even in your baseball rival city. And let's not forget about how, you know, little league tournaments are still going on. We're getting closer to the kids going back to school. So you may not have as many anymore, but uh, if you still got a few more tournaments, booking.com can help you out there as well with so many choices across the U.S. for your summer travel. The right stay can make you a fan of any U.S. city, even your rivals. So book today on booking.com, on the site, or in the booking.com app. Prize Picks is America's number one fantasy sports app. With more than 5 million members, Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike other apps, Prize Picks has you going up against the numbers instead of other people. You pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and just watch your winnings roll in. You can become a, a member of the Prize Picks community today. You and your friends can join and uh, have, a, have a blast doing it. You can now win up to 100 times your money on prize picks with as little as four correct picks. Turning 10 bucks into $1,000 is much easier. I just had some car issues that I had to pay for, and it would be nice to have an extra $1,000 to put towards that. So if you're looking for promotions, prize picks has got you covered every week from lowering select player stats projections on Tuesdays to help your lineup hit or getting your entry fees back if you have a losing lineup on Fridays. And it's also available now in more than 30 states across the country, including California, Texas, and Georgia. So if you do do some traveling and you end up in those states or you're watching from those states now, Price Picks, you can do it. Download the Price Picks app today. Use the code Locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. That's code Locked on MLB on Price Picks for a deposit match up to $100. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy with Price Picks. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. It's now also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. It gives you the top sports stories of the day. It gives you the local experts of Locked On, plus our national shows that cover every league. And you can find it now available on the free Fire TV channels app. All right, your last trade proposal from our buddy Josh Jacobs at Redbird Rants. Dot com Again, we'll uh, put the link in the description down here in case you want to read uh, everything that Josh has to say about these. But his final one is uh, the Cardinals getting Jack Flaherty. And in return, they give up catcher Yvonne Herrera. Now, Herrera has had an interesting season. Started the year, he was the backup to Wilson Contreras, right? Gets thrust into the starting role when Willie goes down with an arm injury. Now, the bat was good. He appears like he'll be a very successful major league hitter. Cardinals are looking for a right-handed bat to hit lefties. And Herrera is somebody that I, maybe he's the guy. Him and Jordan Walker. They might be guys that are already in your in your 40-man roster that can fill that need for you. But he was a good major league hitter. At 279, three home runs, 19 RBIs in the 54 games. I mean, he was batting cleanup for the Cardinals for a little bit there. But the play behind the plate, particularly his inability to throw out runners attempting to steal, it became an issue. He threw out just three of 44 stolen base attempts. Three of 44. That is a 7% caught stealing percentage. It's really bad. Now, they may not all be his fault because sometimes these guys get jumps off the pitchers who aren't paying attention, not holding them on tight enough. And obviously, they've made rules now to make stealing bases a little bit easier. Bases are bigger, can't throw over as much. But 7% is still really, really bad. That's at an alarming rate. Pedro Pajes then stepped in as his backup and... After seeing them both play for a little while, seemed to not only handle the pitchers better, call a better game, was a better framer, but throwing runners out, he's better. Has thrown out eight of 33 would be Steelers. That's 24% caught stealing rate. Much more acceptable. Still not great. We're still not going, we're now, we're not talking Yadi or Molina range, but better. 24 <laughs> compared to seven is a lot better. 
And then you had Herrera go down with the, the back tightness. Remember that? He goes down with the back tightness, and it was right before Wilson Contreras was getting activated from his arm injury, and they didn't want to put Pedro Pajas down. So they were just like, yeah, back tightness. <laughs> but you back tightness. Yvonne, go, go to the side for a little bit. And Pedro Pajas has taken full advantage and has assumed the job behind Contreras. Herrera is back. He's healthy and he's hitting 281 with two home runs and seven RBI since returning on the 4th of July with Triple A Memphis. The Cardinals have other catching prospects in the system. Uh, Leonardo Bernal, who we brought up earlier. Jimmy Crooks is another one. Again, you're dealing from an area where you feel like you've got some depth. Is Ivan Herrera untouchable? Should he be? I mean, you still got Contreras for three more years after this. You like what Pajas is doing? If you have any faith in what Bernal and Crooks are doing, and Herrera can get you somebody like, like Jack Flaherty, the type of pitcher he is right now. I mean, do you pass that up? But which one do you guys like the most? Out of those three deals, what do you like the most? Let me know in the comments section, perhaps... You know, some of these types of deals or packages you might use to go fetch other combos that are out there. Because I, I like the Flaherty Canna combo trade. I like it. You know, I, I mean, they need to take care of all of these issues and to get two of them done would be great. So, um, you know, could you do an Eric Fetty and a Tommy Pham with the White Sox or a Tyler Anderson and Kevin Pillar with the Angels? Can you mix up the combo? Go starter reliever or bat reliever. You can do that too. A lot of ways to go about it, but you know we're just kind of stuck here at the moment, <laughs> you know, waiting for the first shots to be fired, so to speak, to get things moving. Uh, again, you saw Puck get traded from the Marlins to the Diamondbacks. It's not a huge trade by any means, but it's something. And presumably, we'll see more of these dominoes begin to fall as we get closer to the deadline. Uh, we're going to talk more about trade ideas and stuff. In our next episode on Friday, Thomas Govain from RedbirdRants.com is going to join us. And uh, we, we've got a lot to get through. He's, he's got a lot on his mind. I'm excited to talk to him about it. So we'll have that for you. We'll get his input on possible deals and thoughts on the Cardinals moving forward on Friday. Thank you for making Locked on Cardinals your first listen every day. If you haven't already, please give us a follow on Twitter, X at LO underscore Cardinals and at JD Sports Radio. Like, subscribe on YouTube, help our channel and our love for the Cardinals grow. You guys are the best fans in baseball for a reason. And I will see you next time on Lockdown Cardinals.